All right, we're almost done with this section. So uh, let's move on then. So our statement now reads, a time-dependent point charge, QT, at the origin, rho of R of T is equal to QT, Dirac delta of three, or R Dirac cubed uh, R, I don't know what I'm saying, is fed by a current J R of T is equal to negative one over four pi Q dot over R squared in the R hat direction, where Q dot is equal to D Q D T. Okay, that time derivative notation coming back. All right, part A. Check that the charge is conserved by confirming the continuity equation is obeyed. All right, we remember that from chapter eight. B, find the scalar and vector potential in the Coulomb gauge. If you get stuck, try working on C first. But what is C? Find the fields and check that they satisfy all of Maxwell's equations. All right, fair enough. So what we need to know, let's throw it back to chapter eight real quick. The continuity equation gives us d rho dt is equal to negative divergence of j, which again, let's recall that the time rate of change of the current flowing has to be equal to the uh, rate of change of it flowing out, um, hence the divergence. Um, we see these continuity equations pretty substantially uh, throughout all fields of mechanics and classical mechanics, fluid dynamics, for example. You've seen it before, we won't spend too much time on it. Uh, the scalar potential V is equal to one over four pi, uh, integrated over the prime coordinates or the source coordinates for where rho is and the script R, of course. We know what the fields from the potentials are. We spent the first few questions on them. And the Coulomb and Lorenz gauge, we just spent the last two on them. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into part A. So does the continuity equation hold? That's an easy check. Does the left-hand side equal the right-hand side? Plug everything in. The Dirac delta gets moved through since it's a time derivative. Uh, we see that we have the divergence, but there's only a uh, R component here. So Q prime or Q dot over four pi gets pushed out. But we know here that R hat over R squared with that divergence goes to four pi over uh, d cubed r, so the four pi's cancel, and indeed we get a q dot on both sides with the Dirac delta on both sides, so indeed it is uh, held. Good to go there. Similarly for b, the scalar potential is also quick. We just have to plug in the fact that our uh, charge distribution rho was equal to qt uh, delta cubed r prime now. And so we're only shifting, we're shifting everything to the R coordinate system instead of R prime since we're shifting everything out. So that's where we're left with one over four pi epsilon naught QT over R instead of R prime or script R, which again is just the difference. Um, easy enough. By symmetry though, what this shows us is that B equals zero. What direction would it point, right? If it's a point charge, uh, we that's not moving, we don't have a current, so it wouldn't really point anywhere, and hence symmetry tells us it's zero. So if that's the case, B is equal to the curl of A, and if that's equal to zero, well, we know that if the curl of a divergence is also equal to zero, hence the divergence of A equals zero. Let's go back to our vector calculus for that. And we also know that A goes to zero at infinity, so with these two facts, a has to be zero. All right, fair enough. Um, now for C, let's check that the Maxwell's equations are held. Uh, well, we saw that we had a gradient for V and a negative time derivative for A. So the gradient leads to exactly what we expected. One over four pi epsilon naught, QT over R squared in the R at direction. Um, and then B is equal to zero. Uh, again, we kind of sort, sorted through that, how we got that by the symmetry argument. Uh, let's go ahead and now plug in the uh, Maxwell's equations, see what we have. Divergence, does this equal rho over epsilon naught? Sure it does. Thank you for the r, r hat uh, over r squared again. Uh, well, divergence of zero is zero, so second law holds. What about the curl of E? Again, we have to be careful when we're caught up in these um, 
curls because we only need the adequate component, so we don't need to write out the full thing. That being said, both of those components, since we only have uh, we don't have any fee component, we don't have any fee variables in the R component, so that goes to zero. We don't have any theta variables in the R component, so that also goes to zero. And if that's the case, the curl of E is zero, but we also know that the time derivative of B is the time derivative of zero, so that's zero too. Good to go. Similarly, the curl of B, what does that equal? Well, now we gotta be careful because we have the time derivative of um, E to take into account as well, plus the current. Uh, so we plug both of those in, and we set the current and the time derivative of uh, E multiplied by mu naught epsilon naught give us equivalent uh, forms there and they cancel out. So we have zero equals zero and we are satisfied. Good to go there.